If you're a history buff or like movies like Saving Private Ryan or Band of Brothers, our World War II machine gun package is going to be right up your alley. Here at Texas Gun Experience, we have hundreds of full auto machine guns available to rent any time of the week. We even made it easy for you with specialized packages such as our World War II package, which features five machine guns from the most notorious war that we know, World War II. Starting, I have the Thompson M1 submachine gun. There was 1.5 million of these produced for World War II and used with the Allied troops. This is a really kind of an easy gun to shoot. It is a simple blowback operated design and it shoots that 45 ACP caliber. It is fed through the stick mags here and it has some heft to it. So when shooting this, uh, although there is a lot of recoil from the bolt there, being that it's a little heavier gun, it's actually pretty easy to manage and a lot of fun to shoot. This is definitely one of those ones that you see in movies everywhere, whether it's the war movies or kind of the gangster movies that is uh, just very iconic in uh, Americana and is a lot of fun to shoot. Now the next gun on this list was kind of a fan and soldier favorite and was affectionately named the grease gun since it kind of looks like a automotive, you know, mechanics grease gun that they would use to pack bearings with. And this is the M3 submachine gun. Now similar to the Thompson, this does shoot that 45 ACP round also is a stick magazine, but this was really looked at um, as an inexpensive firearm to produce that we could mass produce during World War II, that we could you know, drop out of planes and just parachute crates of you know, uh, these weapons behind uh, enemy lines. And soldiers actually really were fond of them because of how simple they were to use and how much of a workhorse this gun really is. It's you know, fairly accurate. It has a kind of a slow, steady rate of fire. It really makes it actually easy to stay on target, especially shooting that big 45 ACP round. Easy to use, easy to maintain, was very reliable, which is all things you want in the middle of a conflict. And even uh, later on, they were able to modify these to where they can actually run these suppressed as well. So you have a compact kind of uh, design here with a collapsible stock. You put a suppressor on this thing, and it's really good for those you know, paratroopers jumping behind enemy lines, running rescue missions, et cetera, et cetera. The next gun in this World War II package comes all the way across the pond from our good friends in the UK is the Sten gun. Now this was the English equivalent of kind of our grease gun here. It was a low cost, you know, quick to produce submachine gun chambered in the still very popular today, nine by 19, nine millimeter round. And this was, you know, again, one that was quick to get to troops, inexpensive, but also reliable, easy to use and very effective. Now we do have two different models here. We have more of the true seeing military use kind of the wire frame here, just stamped metal, you know, pretty crude. Uh, and then we have kind of the more modern here with the pistol grip, the vertical foregrip, and of course the wood stock. Now the Sten's actually pretty neat. It's a blowback, meaning that it takes the, you know, the force of the round to blow back the bolt and operate. You know, it absorbs a lot of that energy of the nine millimeter. Nine millimeter is not too powerful, but uh, you know, it has a little bit of weight to the gun as well too. So all in all, it really does make it a effective submachine gun to use and it has a high cyclic rate so you're able to keep rounds on target fairly easy this does operate from an open bolt so that means when the bolt is back it's actually ready to fire the controls on this are very simple you simply have a trigger a auto or single shot selector and the safety is actually just this little notch here on the uh, the bolt catch there so when you pull the bolt back you just put in that notch and that's your safety the stem gun again was very easy to use and saw a lot of time during World War II, Korea, and later conflicts, and was kind of the big brother to some of the other very famous, you know, uh, United Kingdom firearms like the Sterling submachine guns, all the way before they got replaced with the most recent SA-80s. Now, if you're really into World War II movies or video games, you're probably used to seeing guns like the Thompson submachine gun, or the Garand, or the MG-42, but little do most people know that the 30 carbine or the M2 carbine was one of the most widely used by Allied, mostly US forces during the whole World War II conflict. Now the 30 carbine is kind of an intermediate cartridge, so it's not really a pistol round, but it's not a full high powered rifle round either. But what really made this gun nice to use is it's very lightweight and it has a very high rate of fire. That being magazine fed, made it very easy to operate. It was reliable and definitely easy to run around with through adverse conditions. Now shooting this, because it is so lightweight, 
Um, you don't really get tired holding it, which is nice, but it does fire really fast. So it's one of those things you really want to hold on to because it has such a high psychic rate. Now the 30 carbine is kind of a pistol cartridge, uh, although an old revolver style cartridge. Uh, so it doesn't really have too much power and shooting out of a full length, you know, rifle or carbine like this uh, really isn't, you know, too bad. But uh, you definitely want to hold on to it tight because it shoots so fast. The 30 carbine is a lot of fun and kind of one of my favorites because of how lightweight it is. And I always think if I'm, you know, running through sand and storming trenches, whatever, you know, I kind of want less weight, carry more ammo and have that high rate of fire, making the M230 carbine kind of a personal favorite. One of the most powerful light machine guns to grace the battlefield during the World War II conflict is the Browning BAR. Now BAR does stand for Browning Automatic Rifle, and believe it or not, this was the light machine gun for US infantry troops during that World War II conflict and later wars. There's nothing light about this machine gun. This was uh, not crew serve, meaning there wasn't multiple people running to operate this and it wasn't vehicle mounted. So that's why it was looked at as a light machine gun. This was carried by a single soldier into battle. It is box fed 20 round magazines, but it does fire that big 30 out six caliber, which is very powerful. Combine that with a pretty decent rate of fire. This could definitely keep heads down as far as suppressing fire goes. There's been a lot of doctrine as far as how to use this. The BAR does have bipods. So if you are in the prone position, laying on your stomach behind cover on the ground, you know, that is probably the most effective way to shoot this. The other way to shoot the BAR, and it was kind of created just for this rifle, was called walking fire. So US troops would actually have a special cup on their waist belt that the butt of the gun would sit into, and they would walk down the battlefield shooting, you know, a couple round bursts with every step as a form of, you know, suppressing fire. So that means you can move forward on a battlefield while keeping rounds down range, hopefully keeping the enemy, you know, keeping the enemy's head down. The BAR is a lot of fun and truly this is iconic and there's few chances you ever get to put hands in one or get to shoot one. This gun does weigh a lot, so it actually soaks up all that power of the 30 out six, making the BAR fairly comfortable to shoot. Now this is a very easy to use gun with a back box magazine, side charging handle, the selector and safety is all very easy to use as well. The only downside to carrying it in battle was its weight itself, but this is a easy gun to shoot and a heck of a lot of fun. It is very loud, lots of bang and lots of flash at the end of it as well. So it's definitely worth some photos and some videos. Up next, we're stepping up in weight class to the Browning M1919 30 cal machine gun. Usually you see these on tripods or mounted on vehicles. It is a very heavy machine gun and carrying this and all that ammo would just make it really kind of tough to kind of solo carry. This has been used for over a hundred years and it's still used today on, a, uh, on light, armored vehicles around the world. This did see a ton of use in World War II by US and allied troops, and was really looked at as kind of the workhorse of those machine gunners. So being that it's a medium machine gun, that it's gonna be on some type of armor or some type of vehicle or crew served, uh, this is able to put a lot of big caliber rounds down range and keep that enemy's head down while others are advancing. So these are reliable, they are fairly accurate, and they're just really uh, the workhorse of any type of infantry unit. Now, if you're a history buff or into some of those old war films or video games, the firearm in front of me really needs no introduction. It is probably one of the most feared weapons in use in any major conflict outside of airstrikes or artillery, and that is the German MG42. Now this was the second generation machine gun. The first was the MG34, which really started the whole idea of what a general purpose machine gun could be. This is a firearm that could be carried by infantry troops, could be mounted on vehicles or armor, and was devastating and really changed the entire scope of how modern warfare was conducted. During that World War II conflict, there have been machine guns for a while now, but nothing was really quite as ludicrous as the MG42 was. So for an example, the Allied forces had the M1919 and other belt-fed machine guns. Those things fired fast, right around you know anywhere between 600 to 800 rounds a minute. This almost doubled that at 1,200 rounds a minute, giving it the nickname Hitler's Buzzsaw. If you heard these things going off, it was truly terrifying being an allied troop. 
and again, really change the scope of the battlefield. Getting the chance to actually shoot one of these and you know be behind one is pretty neat for the fact that you know these have such a historical importance, and not just for you know what you know that they were used during you know a world-changing conflict, but this really was kind of the granddaddy to all modern machine guns in use nowadays. So even the guns that we use. Uh, and even have it available to rent here, like the M249 Sauls and M240s, they owe their lineage pretty much to this firearm. So this really kind of started it all. And in some ways, in various uh, forms, they still use these today, uh, you know, more modified. But uh, to really get your uh, behind an MG42 and get to shoot one is a once in a lifetime experience. It is fast firing, but honestly, it's pretty easy. You know, having it on the bipod, you do shoot it from the prone position. So if you come down to the range, we have you lay on mats, you're in that prone. And the gun just, you know, the way the recoil works is it goes right back into your shoulder. So it's very easy to control. Uh, there is a lot, a lot of, you know, fire and flames and all different types of stuff going on. So it really makes you feel like you're in for a ride of your life. Making the MG42 one of the most, you know, favorite guns here to rent and one of the most exciting for sure. So if you want to get that sand in your teeth and that grease in your hair, come on down to Texas Gun Experience and take part in our World War II machine gun package. Check out TexasGunExperience.com for more details and we'll see you guys on the range.